Hi, I'm Indiana from Kneecap Media. I'm a professional videographer and photographer, but today we're not just using lenses, we're buying lenses, selling lenses, and just generally playing around with some interesting stuff you may not have seen before. So today, I'm exposing my true colours, and those colours are obviously Pentax. So, obviously today we've got a film body with a 50mm f1.7, but today we've got something a little bit more interesting out to play with. We've got something a little bit more unusual. So, if you can read it here, we've got a 20mm f4. So that's extremely wide on full frame, but it's dinky. Like, just to give you a size comparison, this is a very small 50mm. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> so small, it's hard to hold. <laughs> so yeah, don't worry, it's hand holdable. But um, yeah, we have <laughs> about two hundred pounds. So you've only seen one of these before. I haven't had a chance to use it or look through it. So we're going to try it on a film body the way it's supposed to be used, and I'm just going to see what we think. Really, I'm hope I'm preparing to be impressed. I hope. Looking at you, Jake. You're extremely wide right now. Like. Shockingly wide. Like I'm looking at you, the garden, the house, the next door, a lot of bush on this side. Like you seem quite small in this frame, and we're I don't know maybe two three meters apart. This is extremely wide, ultra wide as they would say. And yeah, it looks pretty nifty. To be looking at, I'm not seeing huge amounts of barrel solution. This is no fisheye. It's pretty moderate, pretty well controlled, and it looks like it could be a lot of fun for a landscape lens because it's, it's pretty small, pretty compact, and seems okay, I'm not seeing anything obviously terrible. Maybe, I don't know, we'll have to see. I have to play around, take a few photos and see how we go. But all in all, beautiful in the hand, really lovely focus ring, and just can't just go saying, tiny, two fingers width, basically. Ridiculously small. They don't make them like this anymore. So a little bit of an odd realisation. I can do a full length portrait of Jake from here. I think um must be less than, I don't know, about 30 centimetres away from the lens. Jake's maybe a metre away. It looks quite small though, because you've got kind of a pretty extreme distort well not distortion, but you know, geometric distortion going on here. So his head's pretty large and his feet are tiny, but it's definitely dramatic. So I can see some usage for this already. So while my, my heart bleeds, Pentax, obviously, um, I shoot Samsung nowadays for 4K video. So I'm shooting an NX1. Um, so that's a APS-C sensor, so not quite as wide as the traditional full frame this lens was made to be used on. Unfortunately, I'm not packing that today, so I'll be borrowing um, one of the 600D bodies, i.e. this one, take a few digital photos, see how it might work for my personal workflow, so you get more like a 30mm lens on APS-C. So let's take some real world shots and see what we get. Those flowers aren't really the standard choice for a very wide lens, but let's, let's give it a go anyway. Let's remember if I can use, nah, let's see if I can remember how to use a, ca a cannon. Uh. I, like, I like having wide angle capability but also close focus. Makes the whole natural world seem that much more, like, vivid. Okay, well, I think I'm done here. That's kind of a cool shot anyway, it's kind of interesting. Looking at the ring, it's about 20 centimetres, I think, the minimum focus. Which is pretty good, actually. No, 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 I quite, actually quite like that. Come, come back. So I've shot everything f4 so far. I just want to see how sharp it is wide open. Obviously, it's a little bit of a slower lens, but if its performance is good at f4, then that's fine for me. That's a lot of times, and that's all I really need. So we'll shoot, shot a bit of f4, close-up stuff, a little bit arty. We'll try and shoot some f8 stuff, standard landscapes a little bit later on. But so far, it's looking good. Haven't had a chance to look at them on a computer or anything yet, but looking positive, actually, I think. So, initial impressions are very positive, and rumour has it this lens is very sharp, so like a true wide-angle landscape lens, let's take this out, let's get some F8 tripod stuff and see how it does in its natural environment. It's quite an interesting piece of Pentax history, it's in the follow-on to the 15mm f3.5, which Pentax introduced in the K series, I think they also had a Takuma version, which is a collaboration with Zeiss, very famous, you'll hear a lot of cinematographers really rave about that lens and a few other still photographers. Really interesting, great character. With the M series, that stood for miniature, so Pentax decided to take these lenses, these wonderful 
K series in Takuma, which were famed for their incredible robustness, great build quality. I thought let's make something portable, something really practical while maintaining those same standards. So you take a lens that was probably, a, well it was huge, it was massive, it was ultra large, ultra wide, and you shrunk it down to something pretty tiny. And it's only, well it's less than half a stop slower. It's pretty impressive, so let's see if it keeps that sharpness and quality that we've, the film lens lenses had. So I'm just doing a quick brick wall test just for sharpness of various apertures, just so we know how the performance changes or doesn't change at various f-stops. Should be interesting. So hard. But we've got a tripod, so who cares? Because there's a lot of time you think, oh, I want to get wide because I just can't feel it all in. But for me, the real use of getting wide is to get in close. So we're going somewhere a bit more narrow, but more confined to get some really dramatic perspectives. And just really play around with what this can do. And hopefully, it'll be sharp as hell. Trying to get a bit of flare, just see what the flare handling characteristics are, to see what the oddities you can provoke out of it, so you can see what you might expect from this lens. I mean, it, does see, it seems pretty flare resistant. I mean, I'm looking at the sun right now, so um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything too major, but you want to see it on a photo, don't you? So we had our day out and we narrowed it down to 13 final photos, which you'll see a bit later on. It's revealed some interesting characteristics actually. I've got to say, it doesn't really get that much sharper stop down, but it's got really strong control of the chromatic aberration. Just a teeny, tiny, little bit of longitudinal chromatic aberration, so that's a bit of red and green fringing in front and behind the focus point. No purple fringing to speak of, even in the most ridiculous of conditions. So that's quite a nice surprise. I was expecting kind of worse on that, but it did a pretty good job. But it's really excelled itself at close focus, actually. F4 or F8, like, Really surprisingly sharp close up. Not quite as sharp as I thought it might be at infinity, but still a pretty strong performer. And it's definitely got that certain pixie dust magic that Pendus is quite famous for. Definitely an interesting sort of character.